Hey folks, in this video I'll be showing you how to design and build your own robot maze with the help of some cardboard and a couple of 3D printed parts that I've designed and placed in Thingiverse. I'll give you the part number later on in the video and you'll also find it in the description below. So this is the part here. I measured the thickness of several bits of cardboard and designed it to hold anything up to 3mm thick. By including these internal notches, it'll also happily support cardboard down to 1.5mm thickness without wobbling. After 3D printing my first design, it was time to test it, and as you can see, it did the job well. The next step was to print more of them. You can't really make a robot maze with just one. Now, I don't think you'd actually want to watch me separate the nine pieces from the raft in any great detail, so I've sped up this part. The next consideration is to work out how large to cut the pieces of cardboard. This depends on several factors, from the size of your robot to the position of its sensors, if you actually want the robot to try and solve the maze autonomously and detect where the walls are. The robots shown here are roughly the same shape and size, so we'd be able to fit the same maze with the same size of cell. The cardboard was cut to roughly twice the height of the robots, as it was found that this allowed them to detect the walls without any difficulty. Each cell had to be large enough to allow the robot to change the direction within it if it detected a wall in front of it. But what is a cell exactly? It's probably easier just to show you using this maze as an example. This is a rectangular maze made up of 15 orthogonal, in other words, square cells. Five cells wide and three cells high. If you were building this maze, you'd need 10 3D printed parts to hold it together in these positions. After working at the height of each cell, you'd also have to cut the cardboard to several different lengths. For instance, this section is one cell long, this section is two cells long, and this section is five. As I said before, the size of each cell would depend on the size of your robot, so Marta here would require a larger maze with higher walls. The walls shown here could maybe be a little lower because of the position of the distance sensor, which is just under Marty's chin. The final stage before putting the maze together is to design its layout. I do this online using the website mazegenerator.net. It's a simple interface which allows you to create rectangular, circular, triangular or hexagonal mazes very quickly. The maze I showed you before was actually a 3 by 5 maze which I flipped on its side to fit the screen. If you click solution then you'll see a red line which indicates how the maze can be solved although that's not very tricky to work out yourself with such a simple maze. If your robot's up to it and you're happy to 3D print more parts, then you could make something far more intricate. If I click download, then I get a two-page PDF document with both the maze and its solution. The website's free to use, but you will have to pay to use the mazes for commercial reasons. So, what are you waiting for? You'll find the part on Thingiverse at this address, so get your 3D printer out together with your robot and some spare cardboard and get to work. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, then why not subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. That way you'll be made aware when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.